Welcome back to the online student. Today we're going to be solving systems using matrices, the so-called Gauss-Jordan method. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you what the Gauss-Jordan method is, how to perform row operations, and then we're going to be looking at two examples. Let's say we have the following system of equations. We want to find x, y, and z. The Gauss-Jordan elimination method can be used to find these variables. Firstly, we transform the system of equations into a matrix. Secondly, we perform row operations on this matrix to become the echelon matrix or row canonical matrix. And lastly, we need to solve it. Let's look at an example. So we have this system of equations. The first step to the gauss journal method is to transform the system of equations into a matrix. So we take all the coefficients of the x variable 2, 3, 5, and we put it in the same column, 2, 3, 5. We do the same for the y variable and the z variable. The resulting coefficients we put in the last column. The second step is to perform row operations on this matrix to become the echelon matrix. You might be wondering, what are row or column operations? Well, there are three types of row column operations, the first one being the easiest namely row switching. Let's say we want to switch this first green row with this yellow third row. We indicate here that we switch these rows, so we get this matrix. And as you can see, the first row and the third row are just switched. Really easy. Secondly, we have row addition or subtraction. We want this row to become the same row, but we add or subtract another row. Let's look at an example. We indicate here that we want the first row to become the first row plus the third row. So let's say we have the first row, the green one. We need to add the third row. So in our resulting matrix, the blue one, the first element will be 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7, and minus 1 plus 3, which is equal to 2, and so on and so on. Lastly, we have row multiplication. We want this row to become the same row, but multiplied by a constant k. Let's look at an example. We want the first row to become three times the same row. So we have the, the first row of, of the first matrix, the green one. We want the first row of the resulting matrix, the blue one, to be three times this row. So two times three is six. Minus one times three is minus three, and so on, and so on. Now, finally, we have to combine all these operations to find the echelon matrix. But you might be wondering, what is this echelon matrix this guy keeps talking about? Well, this is an example. A matrix is in row echelon or row canonical form if, firstly, all rows consisting of only zeros are at the bottom. So as we can see here, we have a row of only zeros. It needs to be at the bottom. Secondly, the leading element of a non-zero row is always 1. As we can see in the first row, our leading element is 1. In the second row, our leading element, which is the first non-zero element, so this one doesn't count, is also 1. Same for the third row. Continuing, every element above and under a leading element is 0. Let's indicate our leading elements. We see that under and above these leading elements, it's always zero. Lastly, every row starting from the second starts with more zeros than the row above it. So let's look at the second row. It starts with one zero. This is obviously more than zero zeros, so that's good. Our third row starts with three zeros, so that's more than one. And our last row starts with five zeros, which is also more than three. Let's head back to our example. We have this augmented matrix. The first row operation we're going to perform is we want the second row to become two times the second row minus three times the first row. So for our first element, we have two times the element of the second row, which is three, minus three times the element of the first row, which is minus three times two. We do this for every element of this second row. If we simplify this, we get 
2 times 3, which is 6, minus 3 times 2, which is also 6, so we have 0, and so on and so on. And now we see that we have our first 0. We know that for to, uh, to become our echelon matrix, uh, every element under and above our first leading element has to be 0, so this is good. Now we want this 5 to become 0 as well. So we perform another row operation. We want the third row to become 2 times the third row minus 5 times the first row. So for our first element we have 2 times 5 minus 5 times 2, which of course if we simplify this we get 0 as we expected. Of course we do this for the other, our other elements in the same row as well. Now we see that we have two rows beneath our first leading element. We know that this element right here would be our leading element of the second row, because we know for the echelon matrix, our second row has to start with more zeros than the row before it. So let's try to have zeros above and under this element. We are going to perform two row operations at once. We want the first row to become 7 times the first row plus the second row. And the third row we want to become 7 times the third row minus 11 times the second row. And we see that if we simplify this, we now also have zeros above and under this leading element. Now, there's a certain rule of thumb you can use. If a row is fully divisible by a certain number, you can always do it, because this makes the math easier. We see in the third row that our third row is divisible by minus 64. So we perform this row operation. And we now have this. We see that the first element of our third row, the leading element, is now 1. Well, we like to see this because we know that the first element of each row, the leading element, have to be 1 in the end. Now that we know this is our leading element of the third row, we have to get zeros above and under it. So we once again perform two row operations. We want the first row to become the first row minus 16 times the third row. And the second row we want to become the second row plus 5 times the third row. And if we simplify this, we see that we finally get zeros above our third leading element. Now, all we have to do is make sure that our leading elements, this 14, 7 and 1, are equal to 1. And we see that the first row is divisible by 14, and the second row is divisible by 7. So we perform these last row operations, and we get this matrix, the final echelon or row canonical matrix. Now the last thing to do is to solve the equations. We know that every element from this augmented matrix are just coefficients of our variables x, y, and z. So our first row, our first equation is 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z is equal to 2. So we know that x is equal to 2. For the second row the same. So we have 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z is equal to minus 1. So we know that y is minus 1 say for the last row, and we have that z is equal to 0, and we finally have our solution. Let's have a look at our second example. We need to solve this system of equations, so we have to find the values for x, y, and z. First thing to do is to transform the system of equations into a matrix. So we take all the coefficients and we put it into our augmented matrix. Second step is to perform row operations to become the echelon matrix. We know that this first element, 2, will be our first leading element. So the first thing to do is to try to get zeros under it. So we perform these row operations. We want the second row to become 2 times the second row minus 3 times the first row. We want the third row to become the third row plus the first row. And the first row we want to become the fourth row minus two times the first row. So we get zero, zero, zero under our first leading element. Now that our first column is set, we see that our second row starts with more zeros than the third row. So we can just simply switch these rows around so that every row starts with more zeros than the previous one. Now we also see that our second row is divisible by four. The third row is divisible by 7, and the last row is divisible by 2. So we're going to perform these operations so that our maths are going to be easier. And we see that in our third row, the first 
element, so the leading element is 1, so that's really good. Now let's try to have zeros in our second column. We perform once again these row operations. We want the first row to become 3 times the first row, minus 4 times the second row, and it, we want the fourth row to become 3 times the fourth row, plus 11 times the second row. And so we get this. And we see that we now have zeros above and under the leading elements in our first and second column. We also see that the fourth row is divisible by minus 4. So we divide the fourth row by minus 4, so we get this matrix. Now let's try to become zeros above and under our leading element in the third column. We perform these row operations. We want the first row to become the first row minus the fifth, uh, minus five times the third row. We want the second row to become the second row plus two times the third row. And we want the fourth row to become the fourth row minus the third row. And we see that we now also have zeros above and under our leading element in the third row. Now all we have to do is to make sure that our leading elements are equal to one. And we see that our first row is divisible by six and our second row is divisible by 3. So we divide these rows and we now have 1, 1, 1 in our leading elements. And we finally have our echelon or row canonical matrix. Now all we have to do is to solve the equations. We know that these elements are the coefficients of our variables. So we can find the equations. For the first row we have 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z is equal to 2. So we know that x is equal to 2. For our second row, we have 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z is equal to minus 2. So we know that y is equal to minus 2. The same for the third row. If you don't know how to multiply these matrices, make sure to watch our video on multiplying matrices. So we finally have the solution to our second example. Now, this brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below. And please consider to give us a like and subscribe. And if not, we'll see you in the next video.